If we listen to Wayne LaPierre and the NRA and the rest of the gun nuts on the far right about how to make our schools safer from gun violence and actually pass legislation they've supported, then a typical school day would look something like this. To begin with, all those gun-free zone signs would be taken down. They're replaced with signs that read, gun-friendly zone. This simple change immediately alerts would-be suicidal maniacs that this is their place. With the NRA's school shield program fully implemented, school children will walk onto campus past rows of armed security guards. At first, the big men in body armor with powerful semi-automatic assault rifles it might be a little frightening to kindergartners and first and second graders, but eventually the kids are going to get used to these Bushmaster toting sentinels understanding that this posse of guards is the first line of defense keeping them safe while they learn their ABCs. In the case of Arizona, Sheriff Jor Alpayo's armed posse, because a few members actually have criminal backgrounds, they'll have to be extra keen into their insight into how the criminal mind works and how to stop potential mass shooters. Inside the school, faculty with glocks on their belts rush kids along to first period before the morning bell rings. First graders don't want to be late to first period as the new law requires them to take gun training classes. School day begins and their teacher, also armed with a gun, passes out custom-made tiny shooters to all the kids. They learn how to load the gun, how to aim, how to shoot for the kill zone. They have to do this because just in case a bad guy with a gun takes out the security guard, then the armed faculty, then the armed teacher, it'll be up to a classroom of seven, seven-year-old good guys with guns to take him out. As you can see, the NRA has masterfully put in place layers and layers of security at the school. Then the second period math class begins. Mr. Griswold was up late the night before grading papers and arguing with his wife about their personal finances. He's also dealing with impotence issues. But at school, he feels much more masculine with a long six-shooter in his pocket. He gives his students their lesson plan, but endless chatter in the back of the classroom distracts him. So he pulls his gun out of his pocket and calmly sets it on the desk. Students get the point and immediately quiet down. But they all feel safe, knowing that Mr. Griswold is their guardian angel for the next 45 minutes with his gun. In between second and third period, news spreads that biology teacher Mr. Duncan accidentally shot himself through the palm of his hand. He was using the butt of his pistol to try and kill a cockroach when the gun went off. He'll be okay, though. These kind of things happen all the time. During lunchtime, little Zach and Philip got into a shoving match over a game of Foursquare. School administrators rushed to the scene with their guns drawn just in case. When Zach and Philip realized that they were surrounded with weapons pointed at them, they backed away from each other slowly. The disturbance is resolved and the school is once again safe. Quiet, peaceful. Unfortunately, at the school library, there was another incident. Two high school seniors got into a scuffle over a cheerleader one was flirting with. Being 18 years old and thus legally allowed to carry their own handguns on campus, one of the students pulled out his gun to stand his ground and protect himself from a punch in the head by the, guy, by the other guy. He fires wildly around the library. The other student returns fire. They're both hit by bullets. So two or three innocent bystanders. Luckily, no one is killed, but the ambulances have to take five kids to the hospital. But hey, all those new medical bills, they help increase the GDP. But just imagine how much worse it would be if those kids weren't armed and another Adam Lanza walked into that library. Just after fifth period begins, a five-year-old kindergartner, Billy, takes a bathroom break. He's not old enough for the gun safety training class in first grade, so when he sees a gun on the bathroom sink left behind by one of the school's security guards, yeah, that happened in Michigan last week, he immediately picks it up and starts to play with it. Looks just like his NRA-sponsored AR-15-shaped tin lunchbox that he brings to school every morning. He waves it around, points it at his face, squeezes the trigger. He didn't know the gun was loaded and cocked. In response to the tragedy, the NRA and the school work together on a solution to prevent this from happening again. They decide the best thing to do is to start gun training classes 
at a younger age. He was seven, after all, so that kindergartners can get involved, too. <laughs> Seventh period begins, and the school children are eager to go home. The gun-toting teachers and faculty have rather frayed nerves by this point, and they're ready for a break, too. It's American history class, but the students can't watch any films about the Civil War or Vietnam or Iraq or Afghanistan or even World War II. We can't learn from that stuff because the NRA has told us that those violent films could potentially trigger violent attitudes in class. Also, all images of violence have been removed from the textbooks. Necessary to keep the kids safe. Finally, the bell rings and everybody rushes out of the school, past the armed guards, and into the welcoming arms of their armed parents. Another safe day at school, as not a single madman was there able to carry out a mass murder. When third grader Jimmy gets to the school bus, he rushes into his mom's arms. She asks him, what happened at school today? He tells her about Mr. Duncan's wounded hand and the five people shot in the library and what happened to poor little Billy, who shot himself in the face in the boys' bathroom, but she hugs her son tight, knowing that he's safe. The NRA, Wayne LaPierre, and the school's cache of guns did their job, keeping mass shooters at bay for the day. And isn't that what's most important? And that's the way it is tonight, Thursday, January 31st, 2013.